What's going on everyone? Today, we got some super fun stuff going on. We're gonna be building the driver's side header for the Monte Carlo. So, without further ado, let's go build something. All right, so I showed you guys in the last video. I already got these headers cut down. We're reusing these cast iron truck manifolds. And what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look a 90 out of the header like so to come down and shoot through that gap and then hopefully skate out somewhere in here with a v-band so i'm thinking cut like a 60 degree angle for that and then a three inch piece of pipe with a v-band so let's get to cutting and welding I always like to prep my parts with acetone after I brush them. It just makes sure that any other impurities are off the stainless. These V-bands are male and female connections. So what I mean by that is you can see right here, it's got that raised face on that v-band and then this is the female side so male female right and i don't know what i like to do is i like to put them in direction of flow and what i mean by that is it's going to be a better seal if we allow it to transition into the hub of the joint right so direction of exhaust gas flow is going to be from the engine to the turbo so i'm going to go this way with that tube so i'm going to be welding this to that header some of the best advice I can give you for doing this type of work, always make sure you got a fresh cup of coffee. Oh yeah. Here's our piece all tacked up. This is going to connect right to the header. So I gotta figure out the orientation of how exactly I want it clocked in the car and then get it tacked onto the header somehow. But I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark it with a Sharpie in a couple places to reference this part as well as the header so that I can take the header out and weld it outside of the car because that one. I like to make things as easy as I can whenever I can weld something on the bench or tax thing on the bench. I'm going to do that because it sucks trying to weld in positions. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this V-band back together so that I can verify that there's clearance for it where I want it to go. When you're assembling and unassembling these V-bands, they come with two different nuts. One is a locking nut and the other is a straight nut. And this is for the assembly. So there's no locking mechanism in it. And I like to use these because those locking nuts are typically, you can only use them one or two times before they get worn out. So they provide these and this is what you're supposed to use to assemble it, unassemble it so that we can get it all fabricated. So I got this fitting all cut down. And then if we snake it in here, boom, straight shot looking at us. It'll miss the engine block, no problem. Miss the serpentine belt. Sneak under here. Oh yeah, 
that's the ticket. I got that driver's side header off the car. And then we got our piece right here. And what I did is I put some reference marks on the piece. See there, there, and there. I also marked the same marks on here so that I could clock it just right outside of the car to weld it in place. This is a dissimilar weld. We're gonna be welding cast steel to stainless. That's gonna be uh, a little bit of a process. We gotta preheat the cast steel and then cool it down slowly so that we don't inhibit <clears throat> cracking. And I'm also gonna be welding with 309 rod. And the reason I'm using 309 is because it has high nickel content. It's less prone to cracking. It's also really good for dissimilar welds. So one thing that I'm going to have to do, though, for this to fit it a little better is you can see that I have quite the gap right here, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this thing tacked in place, and I'm going to start making a transition piece out of another fitting from here to there, and then cut away this fitting so it's nice, one nice smooth transition into this V-Van. I just cut this piece out of a 90. Place it there, it fits just about perfect. And then <clears throat> I just trace the outside of it with a marker. So now what I'll do is take this over to the bandsaw, break this off of the uh, manifold, cut that out, <laughs> and then use a die grinder to machine wherever I need to fit just perfect, and then weld it all together. And there's a fitting basically that's made. It's a nice T transition piece, so it'll have nice laminar flow, not too much turbulence there, and hopefully look real nice. I have this deburring tool, and this is real nice for getting any sharp uh, edges out of here. You want to make sure that there's nothing that can get in the turbine blades, break free, whatever. We want everything to be nice and smooth to make sure that fitment's going to be real good. We got the manifold done, everything's tacked in place. Now we just gotta weld it. So you can see here that that fitment ended up pretty nice. I made it so that it's all butt welds. So it'll be a nice smooth transition from the manifold to this primary tube, which goes to a V-band. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test fit it in the car, make sure everything's 100% before I get to welding it, bolt it in place with the gasket and make sure we're good. Just double check everything before you go solid weld in something and then you're really screwed when it really doesn't fit. So we're gonna do that just next and then we'll get to welding. Here we are, we're all bolted up. And as you can see, there's plenty of clearance in between this steering column protector, in between the power steering shaft and that primary. And then down there, we got plenty of room for the V-Van. Look at that, room for days for that V-Van. Straight shot coming at us, so after we get this welded up, we'll come right through here, get that next piece of pipe, and then turn and look towards the turbo. That'll work out slick. We got the header off the car. 
And now I'm going to start damming this thing up, blocking off any open ports so that I can get a purge going through it. And then we can start welding. The first weld I'm going to make is this the similar weld right here. I mentioned to you guys before that we're welding cast steel to stainless steel. So I'm going to use 309 rod for that. I'm going to preheat this part of the manifold with a torch so that they can expand and contract at the same rate so there's no cracking. Um, a lot of people try welding this together with mild steel and it does not work very well because they don't have the nickel content they need like 309 rod has for a dissimilar weld like this. So we're gonna start purging, damming this thing up. I'm gonna make that weld. So here we go. Part of this is going to be welding this v-band on and when i'm welding v-bands i like to put both sides on and clamp it together and what that does is it kind of acts as a heat sink so that the flange doesn't warp and i don't take off this clamp until after the piece has cooled you just got to snug it up a little bit and uh then it'll help with warping to try to minimize that as much as possible and also allow me to weld a little bit hotter since there's a little more meat there to absorb that heat. For purging, I have these silicone plugs that I made. These are actually for powder coating and I just drill a hole in them and put a quarter inch barb fitting in them and they work great for purging and dam and stuff. So it fits right in that spot like it's supposed to. I can start purging this piece out and then we can get to work welding. I'm running about 15 CFH argon through this thing right now and argon is heavier than air so what I'm doing is I'm filling from the bottom I'm trying to push all that air out of this thing through that hole that I poked over there and then I'm gonna let it run for a little bit and then we'll get to work making that dissimilar well and so for amperage I think I'm gonna be around 65 amps I'm gonna be using 16th inch wire for that weld right there and I'll let it cool in between passes but before we get to work well then we got to preheat that joint so i'll show you how i do that i'm going to start preheating this with a map gas torch and once i feel that it's at a good temperature i'll get it back on the table where i want it and we'll start making that first weld All right, guys, here's that dissimilar weld. It's hard to weld cast steel like this because it's got so many impurities in it, but I'm pretty happy with that overall. It ain't too bad. I'm at about 50 amps, and I'm using 308 045 filler wire. Now I'm going to be welding the V-band together. I've been, and for amperage, I'm at about 70 amps, still running 045 wire. So we'll see how this goes.
here it is the final product I wish this would have welded a little better and the welds would have been a little more consistent there's a lot of trash in this cast steel but overall it was okay it didn't turn out too bad so this is complete now we just got to go bolt it in the car That's it for this. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll catch you on the next one.